Good day everybody, this is Terry at Lithos and Lasers and today I was asked to show you guys how I do my packaging. Um, I'm using ReadyBoard from the Dollar Tree and it uh, goes from just handing somebody a package. Uh, I used a box in this case and uh, this is what the, the customer gets. It's uh, two layers. Uh, top layer has cutouts, back layer is just the basic outline, and uh, I got a glue dot behind the items in this case to keep them keep them in there so they don't shuffle if I'm shipping especially. Uh, in this case, this is going to be a local delivery, but it just uh, ups the presentation a lot. I throw my business card in there, throw some information about what they bought, how I stained it or painted it, etc. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that while packaging up one of one of these little signs like that. So, and then we'll probably cover, cover a bigger sign like this uh, before we're done as well. So stay tuned and we will go through this tutorial. All right, so I just made this for a customer and uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna sit in here like this. And usually I give it to them Kind of like that as well, but uh, I'm going to put it in a nice little package for her, so uh, one second. All right, so this is what we're going to be using. This is Ready Board. Pick it up at the Dollar Tree. They have it in white and in black. And uh, what I do is, as I cut it, cut it roughly to size uh, to throw it in the Glowforge. And then um, generally I also cut the outline in the Glowforge as well just so that uh, I can put a nice curve around the edges. And uh, now if I'm, if I'm doing something like a, like a 10.9 by something sign, that, that's as wide as I can go. So I can't do the foam cut in the Glowforge, um, but I can put a bigger piece in the Glowforge, right? And then cut out 10.9. So we'll cover that part later. But for now, uh, probably gonna use a black piece. Uh, and we're gonna show you now how to go make your outline first in the Glowforge UI, and then uh, possibly an Illustrator or something as well. All right. Okay, so here we are in the Glowforge UI. Um, I have already cut this item out. You saw it on the desk. Now we're gonna make a package for it. So, a couple things to note. Um, one, you could go ahead and save this out um, as it is. Uh, we don't need packaging for all of these different components, right? So. Sean and Terry, they're gonna sit in here. So we can just get rid of them. This guy, he's gonna sit on top of here. So we don't need him. Uh, next up, the and, that sits up there. And it's gonna be higher. Um, so we don't technically need any cutout for that. All right, so we need packaging that's gonna hold these two items right here. So, um, if you're gonna put it in a box, this is the point where you would go measure that box and see uh, how big of a, of a rectangle you're gonna need. So first, um, I'm not gonna be putting it in a box, I don't think. So we're just gonna, we're gonna turn off the scaling aspect ratio lock. And 10.9 is the biggest cut I can make uh, vertically and 19.4 horizontally. So uh, the next question is how much foam do you want to use? That kind of goes with what kind of a box you're going to use. So um, for this demo, I'm going to simplify it and try to use as little bit of packaging as possible, kind of like for my cell phone stands. So let's move that for a second. That would look nice. Um, now the trick is if you want to center up this guy on this guy, we're going to grab this coordinate here at the center of it. And then we're going to grab this and we're going to put it centered on that. Okay, so that is centered. Um, now let's put a rectangle around here. Um, 
what do we got? Let's go, let's go with an even number. So let's make that a seven inch. And let's make it 12. 12. All right, so we've got a 12 by seven square. Let's make it a little bit fancy and put a rounded edge on it. Actually, let's make it even, even rounder. All right, so a um, couple of things of note. These tools are all part of Glowforge Premium, which I subscribe to. And uh, having that will make this whole process a lot easier. Um, so we have our, our outline, um, or our, our backer cut. Um, next we're going we're gonna to outline this. Um, because we don't need this inner uh, score. Uh, we don't need any of this. So we're going to go over here and turn all that off. We're going to ignore that. This is our score. We're going to ignore that. Um, this is cutting everything. And actually, we're going to ignore that in a moment. Um, so to, to show you what I normally do, um, especially if this is some a shape like this, we're going to come over here, grab this item. We're going to hit the outline tool. And we're going to create a 0, 0.0 outline. All right. Now, something to note is my shape was 8.01 by 1.7. And my outline, see, it added a little bit. And I don't, I mean, if, if you want some padding around your item, that's fine. Um, I don't need that. So 1.7 there, 1.7 here. And I'm going to delete my original thing. So that's all I really want. Um, for your heart, same deal. Let's put an outline on it. You have to hit create before you can tell it how big. It's kind of dumb, but you do. Um, 0, 0.0. All right. So what I just did is I put a little bit of an outline around this one um, so that it wasn't coming in between every little gap on this on this arrow. Um, that's personal preference. You can do it how you like. So I believe I can delete. Oops. Deleted the wrong part there. There we go. All right. So we've got our shape. We've got our outlines. Let's center, center this up. So I'm going to grab this shape. I'm going to work one side, copy, grab our hearts, paste, whoops, I don't want to do that one. <laughs> I want to grab this one, copy, All right. so we are centered horizontally, same number here, paste. There we go. Um, now, how much corner you want around your item, that's up to you. Um, one way I do it is I'll bring this outline up here to the top, and I'll just count down, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, Fifteen is a little bit much. We go ten. Ten. All right. So now you have your your outlines ready to cut, and you're going to get two pieces of this. So in that foam core, I like to use. Um, I have a preset already set up. Dollar Tree foam core, and it is three hundred speed, sixty five power. Um, before we cut, uh, see how I have this set to auto? Uh, I'm going to put the material in, and I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to set focus. Um, we're going to do that for all of these cuts. So foam core, foam core. All right. And so what's going to happen is the, uh, one of these cuts 
it's going to be just like this. We're going to cut all this stuff. Uh, the next cut, we're going to turn off those two items. So we're just getting the backer. All right, so give me a, a second. I'm going to go turn on the Glowforge and put some foam in there. Okay, so I'm out here, and I was about to cut a piece of that foam core over there down just to fit in the Glowforge. But I do this a lot, so I had a piece. Uh, we know that we need 12 by 7, and we've got 20, and we've got 13. So uh, we're already good as far as size goes. So um, if I need to cut it, I used to use an X-Acto. Cuts really simple. Um, we'll probably get to cutting on the next job. But the uh, important thing is right now we have a piece of foam that's going to fit in the Glowforge. So let's go, let's go put that in here and fire it up. Another uh, trick I'll tell you about is uh, sometimes your Glowforge can't see this black foam, right? Um, take my pins out. Um, it's okay to be a little bit big um, because we're not cutting all of it anyway. So uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a piece of, of tape on the back just to hold the, the foam in place for a second here one sec all right so through the magic of tv i just uh i just taped it down for a second just to keep it from moving um doesn't really matter for my machine where this thing is when i turn it on i know other people have calibration issues uh, i'm pretty much dialed in so glowforge is on uh oh the other tip is sometimes your glowforge won't be able to see our board. So an uh, easy fix is to stick a post-it note on there. Okay, I found some, I stole them. Don't tell my wife. <laughs> All right. So doesn't matter where it is. This is just to uh, give this uh, camera something not black that it can focus on. All right, so now we're going over to Glowforge UI. All right, so we're back. As you can tell, we can't really see that black board in here, but we know it's there. There's my big yellow post-it note. Uh, we've got a seven, well, we've got like a 13 by 20 board in here. So let's go ahead and just turn this whole thing sideways. We can't throw it sideways because we are too tall, aren't we? All right. Well, that sucks. All right, we're gonna end up with some scrap. But we can use that scrap. So, uh, cut one. Let's go ahead and do our focus, like I said. Set focus. I will be able to use this. It's not a big deal. I could have also cut this in order to fit that big white box that we saw earlier but it's going to make your item look tiny. Um, I already get that complaint a lot with Glowforge. Of, Can't you make that thing bigger? Uh, so I'm not going <laughs> to contribute to that by giving them something tiny in a big box. So, all right. So this says we are ready. So what we're going to do the first time is we're going to cut this whole thing. And let's, uh, let's cut this little shape, then our hearts, then our outline. And, uh, How long is that going to take? I'm going to guess 42 seconds. Oh, minute 18. Oh, well. All right, so let's go cut that thing, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back at the Glowforge. We're ready to hit go. Let's hit go. Now another pro tip to not waste material, um, I didn't need 12 tall, um, so I could have changed my outline and probably put it on here 
and got both out of the sheet. So, at least the foam board's cheap. It's a buck. So, no big deal. And then, like I said, the next cut is just going to be a rectangle. So, 20 seconds or so. got the first time ah. there. direction doesn't matter but there's part one so what do we do with these scraps I keep them until I get tired of them throw them away. So let's uh, let's throw something else in here. And uh, now I have an outline, so I'm gonna try to find a piece of scrap that's this big that I can get away with using. And uh, one sec. All right. So this was this was a golfer that I packaged up, um, but that golfer scrap is big enough for what we're doing today. So, we'll just throw this in here. It seems like every time you try to pin something down, you end up on one of those bars that you can't poke through. Yep. All right. Back. Oh, almost forgot my post-it. All right, back to the Glow Forge. Okay, we're back. And Gold Forge is done. So we're going to dismiss that. And uh, let's go here. We're going to turn off cutting this shape out. We're not going to cut our hearts out. So just our rectangle. Uh, let's go ahead and set focus. Uh, another pro tip is um, if you're having alignment issues, um, I always do my alignment after I hit set focus. So then I know the camera is aligned good. Um, once it's focused, if I was trying to match up lines that are already there, um, set focus, tell it to print, check your alignment, and if you need to, you can hit cancel on your print and then move those numbers over. So as you see, now that we're focused, I'm kind of high on and off to the left. So, let's go ahead and grab this guy, make him fit. There we go. All right, I'm not saving much this time, but we're totally in. Oh no, what about that guy right there? All right, we are good. Let's go ahead and tell this guy to go. Twenty nine seconds. All right, let's go do it. Be right back. One more time. Now sometimes depending on your power and your speed settings, um, your middle part will look kind of like an Oreo, right? So the foam in between can sink back a little bit from your edge. Uh, focus. Um, right. So we are 
our white part is a little bit less than our black part, but that's that's fine for what we're doing. So. All right, so now we have a back, we have a top, so uh, we're gonna glue it together. You can use whatever you like. I like to use spray foam or spray, <laughs> spray adhesive. Um, don't spray this, because if you spray this, your part's gonna go in there and it's gonna stick to this. So instead, this is gonna be our, it's gonna be our top of our package and we're gonna have it pointing to the right. Um, so let's, let's grab the back of it. Does not take much. I'm using some Gorilla Glue spray adhesive, heavy duty. If you get it too soaked, it'll start wrinkling on you. So that's all you need. And then I like to, uh, sorry about that. I like to stand it up. So I have gravity working with me for my alignment. Set it down. Does not take long. So, now we can take this and we can go one. All right, so I have a bigger outline for my top piece than I have for my bottom um, because of what I did, getting rid of that, uh, but it's fine. I like to do this anyway, so let's lift this guy out. Non-permanent removable glue dots. I like to just use one, not two. All right. Plus it gives them a little bit of finger room to get in there around the edge to remove it. All right, so that's ready to give to your customer. If you have a little bag or something, you can throw it in there, but that looks really nice. Customer's gonna be, wow, that's so pretty. Um, so next up, we're gonna do something larger. Uh, we're gonna do something more, more along that kind of size. And in addition, we're gonna throw it in a, a bag like this. So stick around. Okay, part two. Um, so I was looking for one of the many, many uh, demo signs I've cut for us. And the one I want that I stumble over all the time on the kitchen table is gone. But as it turns out, I do have uh, this for a customer that I have to pack and box anyway. So we're gonna use them. So um, this is simple, it's just a rectangle. Um, it could be a monogram or something else, but um, we're also 10 inches by 17.5, so totally good uh, on our dimensions. Like I said, um, if this was 10.9 and we needed to put it in a box with padding, uh, we could just go out, cut our foam, make it like 13 inches. Um, in fact, we will... We will probably do that um, for this. We'll just make this backer board uh, accept our flag, but also uh, big enough for the box that we're going to put it in. So let me go check those dimensions on that box real quick. Okay, so we have a box. This is the customer's flag, so totally fits. So let's go ahead and measure, see how big of a package that we can put in there. We've got a little over 19 and a half by 12 and a half. So let's go ahead and cut a new piece of foam core. And we're gonna use white this time. So 
So again, our foam core is already 20. Uh, and we said 19 and a half. Measure twice, right folks? All right, 19 and a half, so. We're going to mark it 12 and a half. One more time. One. We're going to do that twice, right? So stay over here. 25, right, it's 12 and a half, 12 and a half. I like to just leave it there. So we know our board's 20 and we know that the Glowforge will take uh, 20. And we know that our box is only 19 and a half. And we can cut 19.4 on here. So we're gonna do we're gonna do that. Go cut a box. All right, we are back. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our flag. We don't care about any of this stuff in the middle. We just want to take our flag, which we know is 10 by 17.5. Let's just make it really easy. And you don't need the Pro Tools for this. Um, we need. 17.5 by 10. If we turn off our aspect ratio lock, there we go. All right, 17.5 by 10. 17.5 by 10, we should delete it. Don't need it. So, the next thing we need is our Dollar Tree foam. So the next thing we need is our bigger piece of foam that this is going to cut out of. So we can't do 19 and a half on the glue forge, unfortunately, but we could do 19.4. So 19.4. And we can do, we can do 10.9, right? Which is still bigger than our our item. So let's grab our coordinates here. This is our height. We're going to center that on our height. And then vertically, we're going to move these in a second right now. We're just putting this in the center of our cut. All right. So now let's move both of those things over to our board. Let's set our focus. Uh, while we're doing that, we can set this one for Dollar Tree foam core as well. 
once we're done focusing, then we'll line it up, make sure that it's within the cut area. So this is going to be two simple cuts, uh, three total. We're going to cut this one. We're going to cut this rectangle out of that one. We're going to cut a backer this same size that's going to go into our box. All right. So I don't know what's up with the camera here, but we know that there's material there because it's square. So just nudge it until everything turns red. There we go. All right, so let's go cut that. Minute and a half. So we'll be right back. Where is his yellow post-it? It's white, we don't need one. I do a time lapse, but we're a minute and a half. We got time for it. I'll cover the uh, bags that I use uh, here in a second. I get them off of Amazon. They are not heat shrink bags. Um, they will shrink with the heat gun. Maybe I'm getting cancer when I do that. I don't know. Hopefully not, but uh, and I don't usually shrink, but if I think I need to, I might. So, ideally, I would have cut this inside rectangle before the outside rectangle, but it's okay. The foam's not super lightweight, it's not going to blow away. Now, with monograms and stuff, I like to uh, attach my sticker to it so people know who made it, any tips I have for them about their product. Um, there's not going to be room with this item in the box that I'm using, so I'll just throw a business card in there. No biggie. So, right. so part one is done. We have packing material for a double heart, right? All right, so part one is done. So I'm gonna throw another part in here uh, as a solid back. And uh, one sec, okay. I got confused with what the other, what the other piece of foam was. <laughs> um, so anyway, we're gonna cut another 19.4. Uh, by 11 or 10.9 uh, or whatever yeah 10.9 the, the max that we can do this time and glue it on so I'm not going to take you back to the glow forge so so you know the only thing I'm changing is I am not cutting the inner rectangle I'm just going to cut the outer rectangle so BRB okay I beat the light Okay, so I don't know if you caught that, but it was going kind of slow. Um, so I canceled the job. Um, going too slow on this can melt it, make it catch on fire, bad stuff, right? So I use so much of the Lowe's uh, whiteboard chalkboard that that's the preset I had hit. 
so it was going to take way too long. It was going to do 160 uh, full power. So I canceled it. I set it back to the right thing, which is uh, 365. So uh, don't do this too slow and make a fire. Ask me how I know. made it. Alright. So, we are not going to spray this on the garbage can because not enough room. So, let's, let's run outside and do that part real quick. And then we'll come back in, we'll put it in a bag, and we'll put it in a box. Remember, you don't need a ton. Press it down for a few seconds. What? More orders. All right. Don't take long either. All right, so let's go drop a flag in here. Drop all that in a bag and drop all that in a box. Some people would edit this out, but this is life, right? So I don't know what I did. I mean, I think I know what I did. Uh, this is not like a glove. This is like way bigger than it needs to be. So we're going to pop this guy out. Uh, looks like I can salvage. So I'm just gonna be out, out one piece of foam. This is, uh, gonna get covered up by the next piece anyway right so we can keep our backer and we're gonna cut a new piece for the front and we're gonna cut it the correct size so uh, I'm gonna stop here we're gonna go back to the glow for GUI and see what measurements we screwed up or I screwed up be right back so my measurements were good the thing is I had to cut two of these flags and the second flag was smaller than the first. So when I brought up the pattern in the Glowforge UI, I brought up the first time I cut one and not the second. So, yeah. since it's only a rectangle, we're gonna go nine and a quarter. by 17. So we're going to go make a nine and a quarter by 17 inch rectangle uh, inside of a 12 and a half by 19 four. <clears throat> okay, so 
the first flag was bigger than the new flag I cut. So we just got to change the size of our inner rectangle, foam core. So it is 17 wide. And it was 9.25 tall. That was a little bit, it was like right on nine and a quarter. So we're gonna give it just a little bit of wiggle room, literally. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna set focus again. Now we still should be centered up. I'm just gonna run our numbers again. We're good. We're not set on Lowe's whiteboard anymore. So, minute and a half, easy fix. Let's go do that. This is gonna be a super fast minute and a half. Watch this. All right, so if you don't want to waste material by gluing stuff up early, although I got lucky and it came apart, um, this is the point where you see if your flag fits in there. glue it up okay so this time the outside of our packaging didn't have room to put a label up here in the corner uh, I print out these guys I can put one on the inside though behind our flag let's throw a glue dot down put my card Put the flag. All right, and then we can bag it. <clears throat> so um, I was getting some some smaller bags on Amazon, but they were a little bit too small, so I went with some bigger ones. Um, We're just going to slide this in here real quick. All right, so these bags are about 13 and a half by, well, you know, 13 and a half by usable 20. Because there's a, there's a flap that we're going to, we're going to pull the tape. We're gonna seal this guy. All right, and the heat gun can take out some, but it's not gonna take out that much. So I'm gonna use some packing tape here and just fold this over and tape it down real quick. All right, so we are packaged. We're gonna drop you in a box. Okay, the next thing I like to do is, um, we have some extra height that we don't need. Uh, so I use this, this construction paper from Home Depot and I just rip off a big old piece, crumple it, drop it in the bag and, uh, there's no movement. I'm going to do that now. All right. One piece crumpled, second piece crumpled. I usually do it from a bigger piece, uh, from that roll, but I'm going to do it out of this. All right. We're closed. 
hear it moving around in there? Nope. So now we're going to hit a pirate ship, print a label, mail it off, profit. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, I am on uh, Little Forge World as uh, Terry Paisley. Uh, I am Lithos and Lasers, and uh, always happy to help you guys out.